Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Superpower User. My name is Stanley and in this video, this is the fourth and final part of the AMD 3960X build that I've got behind me. There's actually been a three week gap between the filming of the third video and this video. And the reason is because there's a handful of hiccups, some things went wrong, and I'll get into the details when I bring you up a little closer to take a look at this build. Now, um, I've been able to solve all of the issues thus far, and I've actually been able to get it all booted in and in, in ready to go. So let's just get into it. In the last video, you saw me cutting all of the glass and uh, polishing it all down and getting all of these runs tubed up in a time lapse. Now, everything was good up until that point, and it wasn't until I started pouring water in to these reservoirs where everything basically went to crap. Uh, the first thing that I noticed was that the O-ring that seals the glass reservoir to the pump top or the pump mount, I had ended up pinching this O-ring right down here, and I started gushing water as soon as I poured it in. And, um, and I actually had to swap some O-rings around from the top seal down to the bottom seal just so that I wouldn't be leaking all this water. Now, I've certainly ordered new O-rings for this reservoir, but these are coming directly out of Germany, and I still haven't gotten my hands on them yet. Uh, so I'm currently running without O-rings in the top and two really old O-rings in the bottom. So I've, like I said, ordered four brand new O-rings. We should be ready to go once those arrive. I'll have to drain the system, of course, get those new O-rings in there and reseal it back up. The second issue that I ran into after I fixed the leak with this reservoir O-ring was that I started gushing out water from the bottom of this radiator in this front section right here. As soon as I started pouring water in, it would gush out and the amount of water that came out was basically a clear indication that I had somehow busted this radiator. Now, in the second video, I know I told you how important it is to make sure that you use the correct screws when screwing the fans into the radiator. Now, uh, Alpha Cool uses two types of screws. You've got the 35 millimeter screws and the 30 millimeter screws. And the reason why I uh, reminded you guys of that was because while I was screwing my first couple screws in, I, and I was completely oblivious or I was completely not paying attention to which screws I was using and I heard a crack. And I, I didn't think much of it at the time and I was like, oh shoot, I, I gotta get grab the correct screws. Well, it was in that moment where I ended up actually puncturing the radiator in the four top corners right here. Now these alpha cool radiators have these metal lips, uh, metal pieces to protect the screws from going directly into the fins. But this radiator was so old that, um, or I screwed it in with so much force that I ended up breaking the weld for the metal. And that metal actually is what punctured the fins on this radiator. So uh, I actually ended up gushing out water from the four corners at the very end. And I know it was this radiator because this was the first one I screwed fans in and I started with this end. It's very frustrating and I actually ended up having to buy a replacement uh, Alpha Cool radiator, which is what I've got in here. Uh, one interesting thing to note is that the old Alpha Cool radiators, they gave you this copper uh, sticker that you can put on your radiator now you don't have that sticker anymore. You just have a blue Alpha Cool logo in the bottom right-hand corner. This one is the brand new one. Of course, the other three are still the original uh, 480 millimeter uh, radiators. So I had to wait about a week to get this new radiator in. And of course, being vacation and whatever, uh, that's why it took so long to get this build up and running. The cables that you see here are the cables from um, Mod DIY. These are custom cables made for the Corsair AX1500i. These cables I've had for a while now, and I still think that they look pretty good in this black and chrome and white theme computer. Um, there isn't that much white in this build at the moment, but the white cables kind of pop 
compared to all that black in there. So I think it looks pretty good. Now in terms of the flow for the radiators, I've got a reservoir dedicated to the CPU, which is linked to the two top radiators. And then I've also got a reservoir dedicated to the GPU with the two bottom radiators. Now in terms of airflow, I've got all the air coming in from the bottom and exhausting out the top with a uh, 120 millimeter fan just to move air out the back as well. The Zenith 2 Extreme motherboard has its own RGB rainbow colors and the Dominator Platinums also default to this rainbow color theme. Now, I was actually very surprised at how bright and vibrant the Dominator Platinums are in the RGB LEDs. I wasn't really planning on running much RGB. Uh, I was planning on using white light to uh, shine through. I've got some white light LEDs and I was planning on using these uh, RGB LEDs to shine white light, but uh, seeing how vibrant <laughs> the DRAM uh, RGB uh, LEDs are, I'm kind of tempted to just leave it in, in, in the you know, unicorn RGB rainbow uh, light for a while because uh, like I said, this is my first RGB build. Um, eventually, I think I'm gonna be turning those back into white uh, with a with a rain pattern or whatever Corsair calls it. For other lighting, I've got a LED strip right up here, and this is about a foot, foot and a half from Darksiders. These are just straight uh, white LEDs, and I actually prefer white LEDs over RGB LEDs because RGB LEDs have, you know, they have the three colors to mix together to give you that white light, uh, while white LEDs, you know, you've got just the one, and uh, what, what I end up finding is that RGB color mixture can never really be as white as a white LED. Um, it's just the mixing of the colors is never as good as just the pure white. On the back side here, you see that the cable management is kind of just all there. It, it's really not managed because it's really not seen all that much, um, especially with the back side and everything closed up. But uh, I did choose to go with hard tubing on the back side, and this is really mainly just to make sure that I don't have any soft tubing or any um, plastic tubing, actually. These are, this is, I still went with the glass tubing on the back, and it's really made for a, it's mainly for a maintenance perspective, you know. Uh, glass doesn't let any water vapors to escape. PETG lets the water molecules to diffuse through the plastic and you'll lose water level over time. And that's mainly because that's why I chose to use, to switch this over to glass as well. The drain for this bottom radiator, and actually the bottom two radiators are drained from this point right here. And you know, I could just twist this out, attach a drain to it. And this is basically the lowest part of this loop. Now, on the other side, because the CPU loop is these two radiators up here, the lowest point draining is actually this right here. So this is the lowest point to drain these top two radiators. Now, because I've had a drain right here, I also ended up adding this drain right here. And this drain really is only good for draining the reservoir. It's too high to be able to drain this right here, the reservoirs that here, then that's why I have the uh, drain for these two reservoirs down at the bottom in the back. Now to sum it all up, this build is basically done. All I've got to do is to get this front panel in and I've actually had some ideas here because I've seen the SMA prototype uh, right before case lots went bankrupt, they pushed out this prototype mod with the open front and you know, uh, it's got a glass mod in the front. So what I've been thinking is, I kinda wanna fabricate a custom piece here so that you can see through the case, kind of like what you can see right, right here, right now. Um, you can see the reservoir, whatever. So I'm thinking about having a, some kind of mod here, uh, either glass or acrylic, just so that you can have the same effect. Besides that, this build is basically done and I've actually installed Windows on the system and I've already played around with some preliminary overclocking and I'll make sure to make another video fully dedicated to how overclocking really works with the 3960X. Um, 
the whole PBO versus manual overclocking, what is the best way to go, especially with extreme amounts of cooling. Um, you have some vi overclocking videos out there with the AIOs, the 360 AI AIOs, but very few videos with full tool dual 480 millimeter radiator. So if you wanna see that, make sure to hit uh, that subscribe button and that notification icon to get notified once that goes live. Also, I'm thinking of putting out a montage video of just the build, um, you know, like a time-lapse video to sum it all together so that, uh, you know, I can put that up on the channel as well. So anyway, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps consider subscribing if you wanna see all those videos that you know, I just mentioned. So I'll see you in the next one.